So exploring some of the early Grand Prix and especially into the interwar years, you think of often the auto unions and the Mercedes 125s as classic cars from that time period, but there's a lot more out there that existed back then. And I think I've got one of the best examples of a car from that time period in front of us today. This is the Napier Railton. It's a British car from 1933 uh, and, and really was the British challenger to the Auto Union Type C and the Mercedes 125. This car was the car to have in the 1930s if you wanted to go fast. It set many records in many different places and was at, uh, for a time, uh, quite a while, the fastest car in the world. Uh, this is what they call an aero car, something I, I talked a little bit about in the 1923 Grand Prix video with the Voisson. This is an aero car, it has an airplane engine built into it. Uh, and, and a lot of its specs and the characteristics in driving it reflect that. So when I saw this pop up, I saw a mod for this out there uh, for a set of Corsa. I really wanted to try it just to see what driving an aero car from the 1930s would be like. But a lot of folks asking me to do some of the interwar cars, and I think this is maybe one that uh, not everybody knows about. Um, this mod itself is pretty good. Uh, I found just in exploring the Assetto Corsa mods that they're a little bit all over the place where some of them are, uh, for the interwar cars, really good. You got the Auto Union, which is an amazing mod. Uh, you got the Mercedes 125, which is still kind of in progress, but a really good representation as well. And there's a lot of other things floating out there which are conversions and not done quite to the same standard that, uh, that some of these are. This one's somewhat in the middle, but I think it's still serves as an interesting enough example that it's uh, worth driving and I've got here today uh, what is known as the earlier variant for the Napier Railton uh, I believe this is the the version of it which did set the records at Brooklands uh, and the later one they added mufflers too but uh, I thought it'd be fun to take it for a few laps around a circuit and just explain what a car from this era feels like and what it's all about uh, we're here at Goodwood this is a classic circuit in Britain that holds classic car races even to this day. It's remained unchanged since the mid 60s. They, they kind of went against the grain and decided they weren't gonna hold professional level racing anymore. They are gonna keep the circuit like it was and be more of a motor club. Uh, and so for that reason, it's pretty much exactly the same as it was in the mid 60s. Uh, and every year, classic cars descend upon Goodwood, most famously for the hill climb, but also for the circuit and some circuit racing. And so the Napier Railton, I think, is right at home at a circuit like this. Uh, this circuit was created by Man Manta Sig, I think is the name, uh, for a set of Corsa, and it's based off of uh, LiDAR data. So this is an actual scanned circuit in a set of Corsa. Uh, and, and I think when you uh, see the laps around here, it'll definitely reflect that. It's a very, very nice circuit with uh, some interesting elevation changes and everything. So let's jump in the cockpit of the Napier. First thing you can notice right away is the massive steering wheel. And in these days, they had a huge steering wheel because you had to put so much lock into this. Uh, and we'll rev the engine up a little bit to listen to this. Anybody that likes flight sims or anything will recognize that sound. It sounds like a propeller plane <laughs> from the 1930s and, and that is no mistake. This is a 24 liter Napier Lion engine. This was a, an engine used on actual aircraft and they threw one in a car for God's sakes to see if they could break some speed records. Uh, and you'll notice the rev range is super small. I was getting it up to 25 on the gauge there. That's 2500 RPM. Very low compared to uh, modern cars, of course. Your street car goes much higher than that today. Uh, but airplane engines, they don't rev high. So they got power in interesting places. The engine will often sound like it's at idle. And then when you get on the straightaway, you'll hear that roar, uh, which is awesome. So let's uh, pull away here and start ourselves out. Try not to stall. In first gear, we'll roll roll away and I'll barely touch the throttle here as we get going because it's so easy to spin the tires in just about any gear. It's a three speed car, uh, so only three gears and there's actually no reverse gear on the nap here. So I know, I know these days it's hard to get this car around anywhere, but this car still exists um, and it's actually in its complete and uh, untouched original form. 
Uh, I think I think I read somewhere that this car, the uh, you know the one that exists today, has the same cylinders and everything that um, the same pistons, all the same parts that it had back in the 30s, which is quite remarkable. We'll come down here though at Goodwood. It's a beautiful circuit. Uh, maybe not super fitting for a car like this that loves fast, fast speeds, but able to at least coast the car around here and uh, get it through some of these corners. So in lapping this car around, you get a sense for how heavy it is. I think the car weighs over two tons, uh, and it was considered light at the time for the amount of horsepower it has. This is a 535 horsepower car, uh, and the airplane engine itself was built quote unquote light for an airplane engine, but for a car, uh, just the long wheelbase, the terrible tires that cars had back in these days. Uh, make it quite a scary car to drive around any circuit. We'll come to uh, the end of the lap here. There's a couple of tighter right-handed corners. I'm still in first gear. You really only need maybe first, second. I don't think you can quite get up to third. Well, I'm sure somebody can get up to third around a track like this. Hit the curve a little bit there. And we'll come to a chicane, which is quite a difficult task in a car like this. Just gotta really rock the wheel, put almost 180 degrees into it to uh, get the car to corner through there, even at a slow speed. set the fastest lap ever at the Brooklyn's Oval at 143 mile an hour average, which is crazy speeds uh, for these days. And just a year later, <laughs> get a little wheel spin coming out of the corner, just a year later at Bonneville, the Salt Flats in, in Utah, they uh, brought this car there to do a 24 hour test. How fast could a car go over a 24 hour period? And this car ran for 24 hours straight at a over 150 miles an hour. So we'll get the engine roaring up here down the straightaway. Just before this road on the left, I want to dip out of it. Just get the car slowed down. You hear the tires squeal. It's super easy to lock things up on throttle or on the brakes. But for 24 hours, and that's with crew changes, refueling, the car averaged over 150 miles an hour. Definitely a uh, quote easy circuit being flat and round, but uh, for a car to do something like that is absolutely insane. It's, whoa, tip it on the grass, just showing how hard it is to keep this thing on the track. Try to goose it up a little bit though. Get up to second gear. Smoke spitting out from in front of me. So we'll come into the first turn, back down to first. Just slide the car sideways <laughs> on these terrible tires. that this is not super accurate. However, it's a lot 
of fun to drive, and it really brings you there, even if it is for a short while. circuit racer like I'm doing right now. This car was meant to go very fast in a straight line and it set the template for what these uh, land speed record cars are today. So this car was obviously not built for circuit racing, but I want to see if I can do a little bit of a lap and just show you whoa, how hard this car is to navigate around a track, even one as simple as Goodwood. I'm trying to get the pedal down somewhat down the front straightaway. As we head to T1, shift down into first. It was up in second there. <laughs> the back end sliding out. We'll just tiptoe it through here. It does not like curves. Once we're able to get straight, we can give it a little bit of throttle. The airplane engine roars to life in third gear now to mitigate some wheel spin. And just coasting, so much coasting to make sure we can make some of these corners. a sight to see sitting next to the track. I'm sure this thing rumbles all of the ground. Come around here, down to a tight section. Want to basically stop the car, get it pitched in, and then you can use the throttle to help turn it. I find once you know the adhesion or the limit of grip in a car like this, it's actually quite drivable because you just don't put it in a corner faster than it can go as I do here. But once you get in there, give it a little throttle. That'll help spin the car, turn the car, and get it onto this back straightaway. Go up into third gear to see how fast we can get this thing. Smoke spinning out of the engine in front of me. Oh, and it picks up speed so quick. It just wants to go fast. This car was built for straight lines but not able to do <laughs> anything near what the car can do here. I think this car can reach something like 170 miles an hour in a fast circuit, but Goodwood is not the right type of track for it. We'll come to the chicane then, round out a lap. It doesn't really matter what the lap time is. This is one heck of a beast. second it wants to throw you off the circuit. I figure this is not the right place for the Napier Railton, so why don't I take it to somewhere that is a little better fitting? So I bring you here to Brooklyn's, much more the natural habitat for the Napier Railton. This is the circuit that it set its first real record on, as far as I can tell, in 1935 with the average speed of 143 miles an hour around the large oval here. Brooklyn's was the first purpose-built circuit in the world and it's a pity that it's gone today, I think, in retrospect, if folks had realized what it was at the time. Or maybe they did, but uh, it's unfortunate that it's gone. It's awesome that we get to relive it in Sims. I think this is a conversion from our factor potentially. I found it at the same website that I got the car from, and it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, I always hate maybe using conversions in case uh, somebody didn't get permission to do so, but I couldn't do a video on the Napier without racing it around Brooklyn. So why don't we take to the high banks and see what this thing is actually like. So 
So here we are coasting around the bottom side of the banking at Brooklyn's and you can see just how crazy steep this banking is here. I think this would put any of the United States ovals at a, a run for their money these days and the way it tapers off at the end of the corners. I had to actually go check out some photos to make sure that wasn't just this mod but in the 1900s, the early 1900s, they didn't really know what they were doing when they built a track. And I hate to say that with a, a track as historic as Brooklyn's, but we've gotten a lot better at building circuits. And so you get some kind of this wonky banking that is all over the place. Brooklyn's was known for being treacherous uh, and being a track that was super bumpy but fast. There were several layouts here but the Napier set its fastest times around the oval. Uh, and so here I brought the car to the oval. Uh, I want to see how fast this thing can actually go and if I can actually keep it on the track. We've got a couple points where these sketchy bridges cross the top of the circuit and if you get too high on the banking, you can almost chop your head off on one of those. So I'll try to get it up the gears here and just see if I can get the speed gradually up. There's no reason to floor it. The car just spins the rear tires if you do that. But it's also quite scary edging yourself up the banking. And for the car to break the record, you had to use every bit of track available. Coming here now, the track will straighten out a bit and actually flick to the right. And this is where some of the different layouts can be used. We'll actually go by an aircraft factory, uh, the Vickers Company, who made aircraft during the First and Second World Wars. Quite appropriate that we're driving an air powered car. And then we'll start off on the banking again. I am literally pressing one third of the throttle to get this thing just around in the way I'm doing. I've got up on the screen the miles per hour. I've got a time uh, counter on the screen as well. I normally do not run with uh, things on the screen, but I want to see if I can maybe get this car up to the speeds that it did back in the 30s, 1935, and do a lap at that 143 miles per hour just to show a little bit what it's like. I looked everywhere for uh, an app for a set of Corsa that would show lap time and speed. That's how it's done on ovals still in the United States. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything out there that actually tells you exactly how fast you're going in, in speed. So to, in order to hit uh, 143 miles an hour, I've got to average a lap time uh, or I gotta hit a lap time of about 69 seconds, 68 seconds or so. Uh, and so I can try to hit something like that and hopefully get the car up to that speed. But why don't I join you on a flying lap? So here we come to the line. We're high up on the banking now. Need to put a lot of wheel into it at various parts not to fly out of the circuit. That was a real concern in these days. We started the lap hitting 135 miles an hour. Oh, the stiff suspension over these bumps would be unreal. And there's actually a picture of this car flying through the air that's quite famous. We'll hit 145, 148, 150 miles an hour down what I guess I'd call the back straightaway here and fly into the next corner at 157 miles an hour. Oh, need to try to keep the car down low, not get her head chopped off by that spectator bridge, I guess it would be. And then into another one of the steep banking corners. They can come up to you really quick like that because their radius is not consistent. These were built by hand in 1907. We'll come down to the straightaway and maybe the toughest corner on the track, this flick to the right. Need to put a lot of wheel into it, be punishing that left front tire. But then we'll come back onto the oval and coming to the line. We're just going to be right about the speed. It's going to be 68 seconds there, so that's about the speed. I'll try one more lap here, see if I can even get a little faster. But whoa, <laughs> right against the top of the banking. There's some awful footage of cars launching off that banking. I can only imagine to the demise of the driver and crew in these days. Maximum revs on this car, over 2,500. This will come now into the steep banking once more. And this is some awesome motor racing. Oh, try not to let the car drift too wide. Just keep it right in the dark stuff. Now 
slowly turning, sliding the tires. Can't help but think the tire might blow under that type of condition in real life. But we'll come to the line once again, set a slightly quicker time, 67 seconds. That would be over the 143 mile an hour mark. Uh, and it's a sim, it's kind of a, uh, interesting version of the circuit. It might not be a perfectly accurate version of the car, but what an impressive machine this really was. The Napier Railton. A car, I said it at the beginning, I didn't know a lot about this car before doing this video or learning more about it for this video. And it's really happy that I've uh, read and, and watched a lot more videos and everything on it. It seems like it's quite a British icon, this car, and one that I'm sure several in the comments will say, how did you not know about this car? But the interwar period to me is a little bit newer to learn about, uh, but I'm having a lot of fun learning about it. And I think Assetto Corsa and Sims in general are a really interesting way to explore history and uh, learn about different things in racing. I can only hope that there's more out there to uh, experiment and try try my hand at and see just what it might be like even a little bit to experience the type of racing that happened in our past. Still going over 100 miles an hour but we'll slow it down a little bit and come towards the pit lane. I've gotten a lot of suggestions to do different mods and things or try some different sims. I know I just got done with doing the full GPL 1967 season and hope everyone enjoyed that. There'll be a lot more videos coming up and, and hopefully stuff uh, folks enjoy but appreciate everybody riding along with me for this one I hope the uh, Napier Railton was something special I know it is for me but I'll see you all again next time